And to make it even more interesting, you realize that everything you perceive, everything in what you call your outer world, everything, the bird that flies through the, the air, the car driving down the street, the, the computer monitor that you sit in front of so often, everything is actually your energy. Everything. Uh, look outside of you for a moment. Look, look around, out the window or wherever you happen to be. Uh, look around. That's all yours. It is all yours. It's a bit difficult to fathom. The mind, the mind questions it. The mind thinks it's an interesting concept, but can't quite fathom it. But with what we're doing here energetically in Master's Life 11, you'll come to realize that indeed it is yours. All yours. Energy is everywhere, and it's yours. It's not hers. It's yours. Every. This is so important to understand. It is your energy. It's not out there. It's not in the air. It doesn't. It's not coming from another galaxy. It's right here. It's not to share with her either. Never, never, never share your energy. Never share your energy. And I know that sounds terrible because people like are always giving their energy away. Why would you? And you can't. You cannot give her your energy. You can inspire her to use her own energy just by being present, your glow, your potential. But you can never give her yours. And you can never really take hers. You can pretend to, but that's another story. Energy is the playground for you to experience it. Energy brings uh, definition to everything. Energy is a way to experience the compassion of the I Am in a very visceral way, and it's all your energy. It, it, I just I can't even fathom any other way of contemplating this, but it, it just couldn't be anything else but your energy. Yes, even when you look out into the stars at night. It's all your energy. It's you, your perception. Now, you're perceiving through human eyes and human senses, but you're also perceiving through a lot of other uh, angelic senses. But you are perceiving your energy, and just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of it. Energy eventually can make its way into this reality as duality, as uh, waves, light waves, spectrum waves, can eventually make its way into this uh, reality as light and dark and all the rest of those things, and it eventually makes its way as particles, as uh, as atomic and subatomic particles, and it eventually makes its way into this reality as things like the table or the chair or whatever. But it's all your energy. Energy can be singular. Because it's yours, but it also can be used in many different ways. Energy can hold all the potentials of everything in singularity, but then used in a multiple variety of different ways eventually. Now it's up to you, that part of the I am in expression, to use it. Then it will. You could say, activate. Then it will suddenly perk up. And <laughs> it sounds strange, but it's all your energy. In other words, I mean, it's not just saying, okay, we're going to send uh, 10 particles of energy over to you to have this experience of canoeing uh, in the, um, on a lake. It doesn't do that. It's all there. And the human mind says, well, that's a lot. I don't need that much energy. But no, it either is or it's kind of not. I mean, and even when it's not, it's there in its fullness, even if you turned your back on it and believe that energy is somewhere else. It's still all there. All the energy is yours. I can understand why people get uh, all frantic and uh, really in a state of chaos when they don't realize that the energy is theirs when they place the energy outside of themselves, whether it's into other people or uh, anything else, uh, the universe or whatever you want to call it. But when you 
except that the energy is all yours. You are hearing the song of the soul of all the other soul beings, or many of the soul beings, but this is yours, what you perceive. Everything you perceive, everything that is occurring is your energy, and it's here to serve you. It doesn't go out to another person, not at all. It doesn't go out back out into what you would call the universe or the cosmos. It doesn't flow to others in humanity, see, because each and every being is sovereign. Each and every being attracts their own energy. And it goes back into their reservoir of neutral, just waiting to serve the Master. You see, Energy itself isn't a group thing. It's not a community a bank or vault filled with energy. It's not just there for everyone. Energy is yours. It comes from the passion of the soul, from the I Am. Every soul being has it. Every soul being has access to it. but. It's not a universal, not a group share. It's yours. It always has been, and it always will be. It's your energy in service to you. When I meet other people, are these also my aspects, my creations, or are they completely independent of me and I only allow them to meet me? So I know it's still a bit confusing. We talk about all energy being yours. Uh, it's still a bit confusing because uh, you say, well, but these other people are here. Well, they're really not. They're your perception of other soul beings and their human expressions. It's your perception of them. They're really not in your energy. Uh, in other words, they haven't like if your if your energy was a house, they haven't walked into the house and they're there with you. They can't. It's your house, but sitting in your house, you feel their presence, and through your perspective, through your ways of interpreting reality, you kind of think that they're there, but they're really not. So when you meet uh, another person, it's still your energy, but it's being influenced by. Uh, another soul being on the outside. So, and it gets very complex because you have an agreement of mass consciousness on the planet. So you could all kind of coexist and experience somewhat the same things. Mm -hmm. And it gets very intertwined then uh, because of this common agreement. But ultimately, it is your energy. The other people that you see are your perception, but it's still your energy. In other words, uh, I, I've said before, it's the other soul being is casting their shadow or their light uh, onto your house, onto your energy, but it's still your energy. So, in other words, uh, I believe too, one of the questions, uh, one of the things in the question is, are the other people really me? It's still your energy, but it's your interpretation. Of another soul being, so it's yes and no. It's really quite phenomenal. It's really quite simple, but it's so easy to get caught up thinking, well, that person is not me. They're their own person. They're a sovereign being. Uh, but yes, but it's still your energy. It's your interpretation of them within your energy. So they're not in the house, but you've led to yourself to believe they are, hmm. and it's the way you interpret them. So all the energy is yours, and there are really no other souled beings in your energy. Uh, but there are soul beings outside of your energy, and uh, it would be like if if um, two people were walking past your house. You were in the living room uh, reading uh, my books. Uh, and two people walk past, and they're singing. Well, they're not really in your house. They're not there inside. 
but you perceive through your energy that they're you perceive their their singing, their talking, or their communication. And it's the same here with with others. They're really never in your energy field, and they can actually never take away your energy. But you're sensing them, and you're sensing, for instance, their anger in your energy. It doesn't mean your energy is angry. You're simply sensing through your energy. And then there's the qualia effect, meaning because you have been angry before, you can relate to it. And you even uh, you even maybe bring up memories because of that, uh, but it's not it's not because you're angry that you're experiencing this. Uh, it's simply you're familiar with, with what anger is. It's still not your it's still not you. Uh, it's a really good question because uh, it is confusing saying, you know, but it, it it sure looks like other people are in my energy. I see them and. Uh, they're standing right there, and I can hear them. They're actually not in your energy. You're perceiving another soul being, but it's still your energy. It's still your filter. It's it's the way you perceive. So uh, we'll, we'll talk more and more about this. Uh, you know, it's basically what really is my energy and what comes from the outside. It's it's actually all your energy, but it can be. Uh, stimulated from uh, outside beings. You look around you, the room, or people, or whatever, and you think, oh no, it's really not my energy, I'm just in this um, maybe communal space. No, it's still all your energy. You are perceiving it through your senses as being, let's say, communal, but it's not. It's all you're always perceiving your own energy. There can be other characters in the energy. And you say, well, there's other people, that's another soul being. Yeah, but it's still your energy that you're perceiving. It's kind of like you're here and another soul being's over there. They're not in your energy. And you're really not per- you're not really perceiving them. Uh, you know, as a as a human, a human form, and everything, it's still your energy. It's just a, you're letting yourself be influenced by the by their uh, dynamics, but they're not in your energy. What you see and hear and feel is all your energy. That's it. Doesn't mean those people that are in your reality landscape are yours. No, they're soul beings. They're outside of your energy. In other words, they're kind of uh, you could say in another energy dimension, in their own energy dimension. But they're outside of the peripheral parts of your energy. They're simply having uh, creating an energy reaction that you are perceiving within your own energy field. Everything, including the stars in the sky. Everything, including the music you hear from the radio, is your energy. Now, there are common agreements with humans. Through consensus, through agreement, through the gravity, the energy gravity of the planet, that has it that there are agreements about common perceptions. You all agree that a tree has certain characteristics. You all agree that uh, there's the sun rising and the sun setting. But yet, it is still all your energy. Common agreement that says, let's all, let's all play a game and perceive it in a similar way, but actually not in an exact way. So whether you're perceiving a headstone, or whether you're perceiving a, a tree in the forest, or even the sunset, Everybody has a different interpretation of what they think they perceived. Commonality, yes, but always a difference in interpretation. Yes, they are soul beings. They are breathers like you. They have a soul. Your soul encounters their soul many, many times throughout your life, but they are never in your energy. In a way, you could say that the light of their soul 
It casts a shadow upon your soul. It inspires your human beingness. And the same with you, your light. The light of your soul casts a shadow upon their soul. It inspires their soul. And the perception is that you are interacting with each other, but with every person in your life, it is simply you masquerading as them. That's the true difference between a master and a human. They realize that it's all been a big perception, a wonderful, brilliant perception, but it's all been a big perception. It's all been brought into a form of uh, illusionary reality by this thing called mass consciousness. Mass consciousness, the agreement between souls that they're going to see things similar, that they're going to take on a human body and a human persona in a very similar way. It's an agreement between all the souls who have created these breathers, these humans' aspects of themselves, that they will go to a place together, or what appears to be together, and live in a, in a communal form, but ultimately you come back to realizing it's all my energy. This is all me. It changes everything.